the end non-conference action tonight as the Minnesota Golden Gophers take on the Bulldogs from Drake at five and four. And good evening, everyone. Alongside Sean Morris, I'm Corey Provis. We thank you for joining us. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First for the Bulldogs, and we focus in on number 12 tonight, Reed Timmer. Sixth all-time, Sean, in Drake scoring history. Very efficient from behind the arc. 56% from deep on the year. Coming off a game last time out versus Omaha, 6 of 11 from behind the arc. Minnesota must find him, be it in transition or the half court. As for the Golden Gophers, they will rely heavily on size inside. Drake is not a very big team. They can shoot the threes, so it could play for big nights for both Jordan Murphy and Reggie Lynch. And Reggie Lynch had foul trouble last time out versus Arkansas. Let's see if they can get him going early. He never was able to get into a flow last time out in Fayetteville. It'll be Lynch and McGlynn to jump the 20th all-time meeting between these two programs. First time they've played those since 1988. And with that, we are underway, and it'll be Nate Mason, Minnesota, with the ball. The Gophers, 8-3. and three. Lost at Arkansas on Saturday, 95-79. Drake coming off a win also played on Saturday. Beat Omaha soundly, 93-74. Murphy to the basket. Had it knocked away, and good defense inside early from the Bulldogs. Rivers will kick it out. The Dinah native Woodward knocks down the three. Graham Woodward, a redshirt senior from nearby Edina. Best friends growing up with Minnesota's Reggie Lynch. In fact, they share the same birthday. Born in the same hospital, and he knocks down the three. Really good job in that initial thrust by Drake of spreading out Minnesota defensively. Now, the marquee matchup tonight, we'll be focusing in on the guard play. Reed Timmer, 22 per game, shooting 56% from three, and Nate Mason could do it all. For Minnesota, averaging 16, five, and four rebounds per game. And Corey, this is a team in Drake. You mentioned Timmer shoots 56%. As a team, they're 43% from behind the arc. That's been an area of concern early on for Minnesota. They allow 38% conversion rate from deep from their opposition. Drake hit 15 threes in its win over Omaha on Saturday. Shot clock getting late. Underneath, Woodward would try the right side this time at the side of the backboard, and that will count or no. And let's see if the officials are going to grant that a good basket. This is something that officials can review to see if he got this off on time. Will it go for Rivers? Well, first of all, that was an atrocious shot that even made that possible. <laughs> was it I the mean, one off the side of the backboard? Yeah, I yeah. mean, he, Woodward couldn't do that again with a protractor. There was no angle for that to come off. And Minnesota kind of got caught sleeping. My guess is that's not going to count. It looked like it was still in his hand when everything went to zero. But Minnesota kind of got caught flat-footed on that. So Lamont Simpson and Kelly Pfeiffer over to take a look. 18.40 to go. And the basket will not count. Richard Pertino in his fifth year. 83 and 64. His record here with the Gophers has won more than 100 games. If you combine his year at FIU before starting his run here in the Twin Cities. I tell you what, if I'm Minnesota, I want to get Murphy down on the block. Get Lynch and Murphy going, wow, what a nice rotation by, by Drake. Nick McGlynn the block. Drake with numbers in the corner. Rivers will fake the three. Nick Murray from the wing. That three falls, and Drake off to the start. It dreamed of knocking down two threes, six nothing Bulldog. And if you are Minnesota, you have to run Drake off the three-point line and funnel them to the shot blockers in the form of Lynch and Murphy. Mason driving. The kick, Coffee up top. That's way off. Lynch the rebound. Lost it, got it back. Stripped and foul. So Lynch at the line shooting two as we go back to the Bulldogs possession a moment ago. Now they run the initial three-point shooter off the line, but Lynch a little tardy getting out there, and you see the spacing of the blue jerseys of the Drake Bulldogs. They're kind of similar from another team in the league when we were talking 
uh, to the, the staff at Minnesota. They run a lot of the same kind of things as a Michigan. Very precise, spacing the floor, the movement of personnel and the basketball. So you have to be very disciplined on the defensive end of the floor and close out on shooters under control. But you can be a little bit more aggressive against this undersized Drake squad, Corey, coming out. Because even if they get by you, you almost want that going into the shot blockers. So Lynch splits the two free throws and now pressure applied by Minnesota full court. Well, Drake only turned it over five times in its win on Saturday. Minnesota though is averaging 14 most turnovers per game. That would not go. Alley-oop tried. But Glenn could not hammer it down. Now it's Mason from the elbow shooting over Timmer. That spun out. Rivers the rebound. Now McMurray in the paint, the floater rolling and out. And Murphy a double-double in every game this season with a rebound. Good defensive transition so far by Drake. Coffey left it for Lynch. Bobble got it back, brought it low, stripped, but retained, kicks it out. Coffey. And Minnesota ice cold so far from the field, all of its first five. Off McMurray over Lynch. McGlynn's follow no. And now the Gophers counter. McBrayer pull up. Lynch, strong rebound. And a whistle and a foul. They're going to get McGlynn. Really good job by Lynch of getting his body into McGlynn. Once that ball caromed off, Lynch knew exactly where it was going to go, and he got his body and hip into McGlynn. Nice job by Lynch, but I tell you what, right now, Minnesota, kind of like we saw on the road against Nebraska, kind of a step slow. And Drake playing very, very confident. They have to feel very good because their leading scorer, Reed Timmer, has not been able to get on track thus far. You now, this game concerned Richard Pitino tonight, not just coming off a loss on Saturday at Arkansas, but the pace in which that game was played to play two days later. Now, Drake just played as well, but the pace that Minnesota was playing and the environment, that will drain a team. And we talked about it earlier. Drake is so efficient in the movement of their personnel. They give you a little bit of a different look than Arkansas would, which is a more physical team. Gaston Jeju checks in for Minnesota. Bakari could not take clear to play tonight, did not play on Saturday with a concussion. But Jeju comes in for Lynch early on. And look what Drake is doing defensively. They're really packing it in, trying to take away anything going toward the basket. Nice fine inside. Jeju scores. Murphy with a feed. Good job by Murphy of dribbling with his head up. Excellent delivery where his teammate caught it right at the letters, could go into the shooting motion. Noah Thomas, freshman from Australia, on the floor for the first time for Drake. As is Casey Schlaughter, Richard Jr. from Iowa Falls, Iowa. McMurray knocked away by McBrayer, got it back. Two to shoot. Woodward got it off, raised the rim, and the rebound run down oh. in the corner by Schlaughter. That just can't happen if you're Minnesota. Just cannot happen, and that's why. And Richard Pertino is hot right now. And he should be. This team stopped and reached for the basketball. Drake ran through the play and grabbed it with two hands. He's to another three, the third three tonight for the Bulldogs. And none from Timmer. Murphy tripped, lost it, and a turnover. Up the floor, Thomas. The pass from Woodward lays it up and in. And Richard Pitino will take a timeout. And the Bulldogs on the road off to a tremendous start. Four of nine from the field. They've hit three threes. The Edina native Woodward got it started. Then it was the transfer McMurray. And off the hustle in the corner led to Schlaughter for one more three. The road lead Minnesota by a score of 11 to three. With that, we officially welcome you to side, everybody with Sean Morris, I'm Corey Provis, and Drake, a team that we knew would hustle, hit some threes here tonight if things are going well. And so far, that's happening. Three-point shooting is the staple for Drake. They're three of five from behind the arc in the early going. But you mentioned it, Corey. The reason for this last timeout was just a complete lack of hustle on display by Nate Mason. That This shot should have never occurred.
if Nate Mason takes one extra step and tracks the ball down, they're going the other way. And right now, Drake is a half step to maybe a full step quicker to every loose ball. And it's showing in the offensive rebounds as they are a much smaller team. Casey Slaughter who ran down that ball and that set up Thomas with a three. Now Murphy muscles up and scores inside out of the timeout. But that's how you respond. You know, you don't hang your head. You go inside. That's where they have a decided advantage. And if you're Minnesota, you can't play around with a team like Drake that now has some confidence, especially from behind the arc. Saw the numbers on Murphy averaging nearly 20 per game and 13 rebounds per contest. Rivers driving. Shot clock getting late. Nick Murray off the fingertips of Woodward and Thomas. Able to save it, but out of bounds. And a strong defensive stand that time by Minnesota. Third Drake turnover. And there is Nico Medved. Strong ties to this program, to this city, to this state. From nearby Roseville, went to Roseville High School, former student at the University of Minnesota, was a part of the coaching staff. As an undergrad, was briefly an assistant coach for Dan Munson and Jim Molinari here for one year. And most recently did a fantastic job at Furman in the Southern Conference. And a foul will be called. They're going to get Noah Thomas with a grab of the arm. And in fact, the reigning Southern Conference Coach of the Year with the job he did at Furman. Drake hasn't been at the NCAA tournament since 2008. McBrayer over Timmer. Dunde with the rebound for the Bulldogs. Senior from Chicago. Nice job by McBrayer of really shadowing Timmer. Big block there for Murphy, denying Thomas in transition. Mason. Murphy the tip. Into the hands, though, of Jalen Gibbs coming off a great game against Omaha, 16 points. A career high on Saturday, number two in blue. Gophers now 2 of 10 from the field, 0 of 3 from the on the arc to start the night. Schlaughter over Lynch, and Murphy another rebound. This is third rebound already. Murphy inside, off the glass, rattled out. Murphy again is fouled. And that's where Drake is at a disadvantage, a possession like that. There's no answer inside against the big boys. And this is why you want to run Drake off the three-point line. We talked about the importance of that because you want to shift, funnel it to the shot blocker, Lynch. And in that case, Murphy, Murphy's able to come over. That's a clean block. It did not hit the backboard. It was still on its way up. If the ball had hit the backboard, you have to let it alone. But Murphy got it before it was able to accomplish that. Murphy 72% at the line. That's well above his career numbers. Was at 62% yep. before this surge here this season over his career. So Murphy knocks down two. Timmer's been quiet so far. Yeah, nice job by Mason of being on the catch. McGlynn over Lynch. Good defense by Lynch, and Murphy clears. Yeah, nice job. Really good job of inverting and going right inside by Murphy. Little Murphy now with six. Little dribble handoff action there, Corey. He understood he had the size advantage, and was able to maximize in that situation. Nice response by Minnesota after Coach Patino had to burn a timeout. 6 nothing run, as you see. Timmer got it back against Lynch. Blocked. Kirk recovers. 
And now Mason. Here's the freshman. Isaiah Washington, no look pass. Murphy! And we're tied. And now the Bulldogs with a timeout. So Richard Bertino called time at his team. Huddled around him. And the Gophers, 8 0 run, have tied things up. Nice job of. Jordan Murphy on a great run. Scored the last eight for the Gophers. 11 11. Nice response by Minnesota, and in particular, Jordan Murphy on going on that 8 0 run after that timeout that was called by Coach Patino after a lack of effort led to a made three off a scramble situation. Timmer doesn't go, and Lynch picks that rebound down. Timmer scoreless so far tonight, averaging 22 per game. Now hurt against Gibbs. Washington Sploder doesn't go. Lynch tips. Look at him work inside. And a fresh possession. Mason lost it. Third Minnesota turnover. Nice job by Mason. Really good job of honoring the scattering report on Timmer there. The three up top, and it goes. Lori Arogondonde, a 36% three-point shooter. That snaps a drought for the Bulldogs. They had gone more than four minutes without a field goal. And Drake regains the lead. That's the three-point shot. That'll be a focal point for the Bulldogs. They've knocked down four already. Murphy got another chance, sets up Hurt for three. Washington inside, somehow the freshman got up. Able to tip that one down. Isaiah Washington, 6'1", 190 from Harlem, reigning Mr. Basketball in the state of New York. This first field goal. Washington just drew the foul on the defensive end, but he's very active on the offensive glass, Corey. They don't put a body on them. And again, even from the guard position, you can see the size advantage enjoyed by Minnesota. And I don't care how much taller you are, if you're Jordan Murphy, if you have your hands down on a three-point shooter, a team that knocks down 43% as a unit will make you pay. Washington whistled for the foul a moment ago. That's the first foul committed by Minnesota tonight. Dante Fitzgerald checks in for the Gophers. McGlynn from the elbow, no, hurt the rebound. And Grayer back in. Passed up a three. Against Woodward. Now it's McGrayer. Shot clock under 10. But Drake doing a really good job of sagging in, trying to take away things going toward the rim. And Washington lost it out of bounds. It'll belong to Drake. A solid defensive sequence that time for the visitors from Des Moines. And now if you're Drake, as you come to the offensive end, you have Murphy on the bench. And Fitzgerald has battled foul trouble, especially trying to defend players on the perimeter because of that knee injury, can't necessarily move as quickly laterally. Let's see if Drake tries to take advantage here. It's McGlynn from the wing for three. And Washington the rebound. Drake now four of eight as a team from three. There's Lynch spinning, hustling around McGlynn and a foul. And that's going to be the second on McGlynn. Mentioned that Drake doesn't have much size. McGlynn, one of the few guys that does possess that at 6'8", 223, but two fouls. And he will come out of the game. DC Schlaughter back in for the Bulldogs. Now the Grayer in the paint. Floater too strong. On the floor, and it's pulled away by the Bulldogs and Deontay McMurray. Around Hurt, the reverse, oh. and the roll off the glass. What a wonderful utilization by McMurray, Corey, of the hesitation dribble. 
Hurt thought he was going to pull it back out and kick it, but he kept the dribble alive. Was able to get his hips by and use the rim to shield it off. Wonderful job. Senior transfer from Southwest Illinois College. And now the Gophers give it back. It'll belong to Drake when we return with 7.47 to go until halftime. He who hesitates isn't necessarily lost, and McMurray shows you why there. You get the defender out of the stance, you turn the corner and complete. Drake very impressive here in the Twin Cities. State, and let's take a look back at the 93-94 Clem Haskins team on the left. Dave Thorson, a Minneapolis high school coaching legend in his first year, coaching now with the Bulldogs, and there is Nico Medved, a student manager back then. Dave Thorson, enjoy chatting with him today at shoot around, had just a remarkable run. The prep ranks and now back in college for the first time in nearly 30 years. Shot clock under 10. Well, he got, got away with it, yeah. But how about the execution by Drake? They kind of worked in a series of concentric circles until they got around the rim. Drake lead back to five in Washington. Cut into that, no. And it's knocked out. It's going to belong to Minnesota. With a lot of blue shirts underneath, and no one could corral the rebounds. The Gophers and Nate Mason back on the floor have the ball down five as Washington leaves. Now if you're Drake, you have to be cognizant of the lob here. Mason scoreless so far. And that remains the case. Now 0 3 from the field. And the leading score for Drake, Timmer with the ball, also scoreless thus far. Murphy has eight. Uh, Minnesota's 13 points. Here's the aforementioned Timmer. Nice. Really good execution. Drake runs some nice stuff for it. They they're very precise, and if you fall asleep, they'll make you pay. Nice. Gives it back to Murphy. The give and go. If not the oldest play in the game, it's certainly up there and a wonderful job by the two post players of utilizing it to perfection. Murphy with 10 points, already five rebounds. Timmer up top, and there's his first three. Sixth all-time in scoring history at Drake, and there's a chance he could rank number one when it's all said and done. Josh Young, the leader, and nearly 1,800 career points, and don't rule out Timmer catching him as this season continues. Lynch, Ronnie was shoved down. Richard Pitino wanted a whistle. Instead, play continues. And the Bulldogs can't take advantage. They give it back. It'll belong to the Gophers down by six. We go back to the passing of the bucket a moment ago. High post, Murphy sends it down to Lynch. That's why it's our Bass Pro Shop in the net. And the ball never hit the floor. That's beautiful basketball between the two post players. And that's an area that Lynch has improved upon greatly. His ability to pass, good recognition by Murphy of understanding the give and go was available. And Brayer off the curl. And the three-point shooting rolls continue for the Gophers. Nice block out right there. And if you're Minnesota, why not at least have a post touch and then kick it back out? You can get that shot just about any time you want. Gophers now 0 of 6 from 3, up and under. Timmer underneath the basket. And now the Bulldogs have to bring it back out. Under 10 on the shot clock at five to go in the half. Schlauter over Lynch. Schlauter averaging six per game. He has four. And the lead back up to eight. And a game of runs so far. And a really good job by Drake of pulling the shot blocker Lynch away from the rim. And a strip, got it back. And a jump ball is the call. Ori Aragondande got in the lane, and he bothered Lynch, and the jump ball is the call, and it'll belong to the Bulldogs. Now watch what Slaughter does. He pulls the shot blocker away. They like to utilize that high pinch post, that elbow extended, 
And even if he misses that shot, it pulls Lynch away from the rim. So if there's a rebounding opportunity, the chances are enhanced because Lynch isn't around the basket. That Timmer Mason matchup, Schlaughter for three. Ooh. Way off. You usually have to be part of a union to throw a brick around like that. <laughs> Murphy. Mason a deep three. Mason's really struggling tonight. He hasn't been able to get into any kind of flow. And Grace done a nice job after that 8 0 run of really packing things in and taking away any opportunities around the rim for the much bigger Gophers. Mason 0 of 4. Gophers as a team 0 of 7 from 3. One and done for Drake and McGrayer too high for Coffee. Yeah, the Gophers give it right back. Turnover number five. So Richard Bertino will bring his team over. Drake on the road, leading by eight on BTN. Second, it blocks, but a rough go, not just so far tonight, but Sean, well, back to their last two games as well. Yeah, not a whole lot of offensive flow thus far for extended periods of time by the Golden Gophers, and I think it's really epitomized when you take a look at it, Corey. This is a team that has a decided size advantage, yet they're 0 of 7 from deep. Some of those coming without there being a post-touch, so Drake has done a nice job of kind of goading some shooters from Minnesota into taking some shots, particularly early in the possession. Possession changed nice. during the timeout. They awarded the ball to Minnesota. It was last touched by Thomas. The Gophers take advantage, finding Lynch inside. Nice job of responding again out of the timeout by Minnesota. Last time there was a timeout of any consequence, they went on a mini 8-0 run spurred by Jordan Murphy. Poor pass there from McMurray and a turnover. Now Mason scoreless so far tonight. McGrayer got a screen from Lynch. And now a three-point shot. It was down, but popped out. But you can live with that shot, Corey. It came after some dribble penetration and forcing Drake to move. Deontay McMurray, a lot to like oh. about this young man's half so far tonight. Attacking the basket, does it again. He has seven. Mason. There's the first main three tonight for the Gophers. They had missed their first eight. And the first points for the preseason All-Big Ten selection. Nice job by McCrayer being there on the catch of Timmer. Skip pass in the corner. And it falls. Rattled out and went back down for Ori Arogondade, a second three tonight. And Corey, Coach Patino, apoplectic over there because they talked about that in the shoot-around incessantly. You have to watch that skip pass. You can't fall asleep. Drake showed you why there. Lynch the miss. Thomas the save along the baseline. Corey Kinsling, a redshirt junior on the floor. For Drake, number 32 in blue. F3, no. Offensive rebound. Timmer up top. Too strong, and Murphy, great position inside, his seventh rebound. And Mason crossing over defender, and a whistle, and a foul, halting play with a 129 to go until halftime. Excellent pass out of the double team by Murphy, started that sequence. Lynch got away with the dribble, probably won't be able to do that in conference play, and Nate Mason has not been able to get things going offensively thus far his first triple of the evening. So Lynch comes out. Jeju and Hurt back in. Murphy also sitting. Yeah, I think Jordan Murphy's out because of that defensive lapse down there. Not honoring that skip pass. Bumping the cutter, which allowed the open three. Mason against Timmer. Blocked and fouled. And Nate Mason will shoot two. Uh, Timmer, that's his first. It's 
So two free throws upcoming here for Nate Mason, 78% at the line. Well, coming up next is the State Farm Halftime Report with Dave Revson and Robbie Hummel. All coming up at the break. State Farm Halftime Report with Dave and Robbie from our BTN studios in Chicago. Mason connects on one of two. Murray now defended by Jeju along the baseline of Rivers from the corner. And now Mason. McGrayer, good luck. Hurt the offensive rebound. Mason will try again. Mason now with seven. And the other thing that early shot did for Minnesota, Corey, it gave them a two for one. There's about a 15 second difference right now between shot and game clock. So they're going to get an extra possession if they clean up on the window. Kinsling against Jeju. McMurray over Hurts. Too strong. And Mason wisely from the tip the ball to himself. And now the shot clock is off, and Minnesota can hold for the final bucket. Mason with five, with three. McBrayer with one. McBrayer, they do not get a shot off. And that's the way the half ends. And the Gophers had a chance. Mason gave it up to McBrayer. And Minnesota runs out of time. And at the break, the Bulldogs on the road lead. Minnesota 28 to 24. The Gophers have dropped three of their last four. The Bulldogs five and four on the year. It's a four-point game at the break. Stick around. The State Farm Halftime Report coming up next right here on BTN. Ready to begin the second half of play here at the barn. And the Bulldogs lead the Gophers by four at the break. Welcome back to... Williams Arena, everybody, with Sean Morris, I'm Corey Provis. Minnesota at times, that first half, ugly, ugly basketball, so much so that they were booed off the floor entering the locker room. Richard Bertino, rightfully so, had a reason to be upset. There were a couple of lackluster plays that caught your attention in the first half. Yeah, it, numbers don't always tell the entire story, although Drake is up four with their leading score being held scoreless. But, Corey, a couple of plays really tell the story of the first half. Watch this loose ball situation. We pointed it out live. You've got two white jerseys who kind of jog after it. Drake tracks it down, and it leads to a made three, one of six in the first 20 minutes from the visitors from Des Moines. And this was a play that was worked on constantly in the shoot around that skip pass. Jordan Murphy a little tardy getting out, and then he compounds it by coming out hands down, and Drake makes them pay. So if you're the Bulldogs, you have to feel very good about where you are. You've done a nice job defensively. You're 6 of 17 from deep, and your leading scorer, Timmer, at 22 per outing, only three in the first half. They Mason with seven at the break. So those came late. Murphy 10 and 7. Important four minutes here for Minnesota. We were chatting about that during the break, about who this first few minutes is more important to when you think the Gophers. I think it's Minnesota because right now, if you're Drake, you have to feel like you're playing with house money, and the, all the pressure is on Minnesota to respond and not settle for jump shots early in the shot clock. Good start on the offensive set to begin the second half by Minnesota. Drake in the first half, five different players made at least one three. Here's Timmer, the bounce inside. McGlynn got Lynch up and scores. And a good job by Timmer of giving himself up. What I mean by that is cutting hard, getting the basketball, understanding he wasn't going to get the shot himself, but the utilization of the bounce pass, very good set to answer by Drake. They made the last nine points for the Gophers. That's kicked by Woodward. Minnesota fell in love with some perimeter jump shots early, particularly in the middle part of that first half. Good job of coming in and going toward the basket, and then Drake returns the favor. Timmer, the leading scorer, giving himself up with a hard cut, drawing the attention, and then the lead. Mason left it short, but turned out to be a good pass as Lynch cleaned it up. Lynch now with five. Glenn 
Too strong and Timmer the rebound. Lynch has now surpassed 1,000 career points. Woodward driving around his former high school teammate in Lynch. And McMurray. Good first half we saw for the senior McMurray. His buckets for the most part came attacking and this time he knocks down another three. And the dribble drive along the baseline got Minnesota scrambling a little bit and Drake, I tell you, they run some really good stuff and a nice job defensively of taking away that high low feed. It's the sixth Minnesota turnover. McMurray will try again and that one rattled out and Murphy was up high for his eighth rebound. Mason had a strip by Rivers and here come the Bulldogs three and two. Woodward trailing, catching for three. And it's tipped back out and a fresh 30. Another hustle play. Another hustle play leads to three opportunity. A Timber foul shooting three. Corey, you saw a white jersey reaching with one hand. Drake takes the extra step. The previous possession, dribble drive, you get Minnesota scrambling defensively. That led to the main three by McMurray, and then you take away the high-low feed. Really good job of taking that away. Drake honoring the scouting report, and they have to feel very good about where they are. They've actually been able to extend their half-court advantage, or half-time advantage, rather. Timmer, an outstanding free-throw shooter, over 90%. Nico Medved came here. And he was coaching with Furman a couple of years ago. This game was added late to the schedule. And he took over a more abound Furman program. They won the regular season Southern Conference title a year ago and just really rejuvenated that program down in South Carolina. Lynch against McGlynn. Lynch now at seven. And Run it low there briefly, yep. but got it back up. And Lynch has to be a little bit more careful with that spin move because Drake's done a very good job. They stole it from him in the first half there. It was just his brute strength with their lob to take it off the double. The lob to McGlynn, and he is fouled. Rivers setting up McGlynn, and that's the first foul on Lynch. And remember in the first half, Corey, they utilized that play as well. It was the pass that was a little errant that didn't allow them to convert, but they go right back to it. Nico Medved telling us today he's got in all about 200, 200 family and friends here at the game tonight. Well, the action ends. The big show takes over. Highlights from around the conference. Post-game reaction straight from the arena and in-depth expert analysis. The big show after the game right here on BTN. Dave and Robbie will have that for you coming up as soon as we are done here from the barn. Eight-point lead for the Bulldogs matching their largest tonight. And McMurray is guarding Murphy. He has to really post hard on the duck end and demand the basketball. Instead, Coffey challenging, missing. Got it back. And one. <laughs> Foul is on McMurray, his second. Coffey able to get to that left hand. Not able to convert, but a good job of staying with it. And able to play through some contact and that's a foul if you're Drake Corey you're not the deepest team and if you're going to make a foul you want to make sure that the shooter in that case coffee can't get the ball above his shoulders to even provide the opportunity for a three-point play first points tonight for coffee coming off a solid game 18.6 rebounds but this is the free throw despite the loss at Arkansas on Saturday Noah Thomas freshman from Sydney Australia has the ball right now for the Bulldogs Three goals for Thomas. And there's the largest lead tonight for the Bulldogs, up to nine. I'm really impressed with Drake and their precision on the offensive end of the floor. There was a little baseline rub screen, which freed up the shooter after some excellent ball movement reversing it. Drake made 15 threes on Saturday, eight so far tonight. As Murphy answers for two, he has 12.
Drake has 12 assists on 14 made field goals. Good defense here from the Gophers, and now Coffey will push it. Driving on Timber, and it's going to belong to Drake. Last touch by Coffey. To the disbelief of Richard Pertino, the eighth Minnesota turnover gives it back to the Bulldogs. Baseline screen movement of the personnel negates the size advantage enjoyed by Minnesota, but not in this situation. They need to ride Murphy to climb back into this. 41-34, Drake on top. Early stages, second half. Significant alumni base here in the Twin Cities. They're enjoying what they're seeing so far tonight. And they're enjoying some excellent offensive execution. Drake really essentially, two defenders take themselves out, then you utilize the rub screen. Murphy doesn't head strong, but Greer kind of rounds it off, and Drake just utilizing the half-court set, the spacing of the personnel, and dribble penetration when the opportunity presents itself, and they've done a very nice job, and Minnesota has to get back to honoring the scouting report because there's nothing that they've been shown that wasn't talked about in the shoot-around today. You know, Drake's attempted showing 37 shots, 21 of the 37 threes. Does that ratio surprise you or what you expected? No, I think it's exactly what they expected just because of their undersized and they've lived and died with that. And when you shoot 43% as a squad coming in, you could certainly live with that. Timber struggling from the field despite Drake owning the lead. McGrayer, short, tipped, and Murphy dominating inside. Lifted short, tipped up and in. Number three was the long goal for inside, and he made that happen. Another double-double for Murphy, 14 and 11. That's his 12th of the year in as many games, and last year, 12 double-doubles for the entire season for the junior from San Antonio. Coffey fell down, play continued, and McMurray left it short. Nice. Lynch to Murphy. That's the second time they've been able to utilize that. And what Murphy did, which was really smart, Corey, is that he started to sprint, then he slowed up, and that allowed the play to develop. If he runs full bore, that diving angle is not there because once the ball went into Lynch, the heads turned, and Murphy made them pay, and Minnesota trying to climb back home. This is the second time that they've been able to utilize this play, the second assist for our State Farm assist of the game from Reggie Lynch to Jordan Murphy on the secondary break. And Murphy did a really good job of timing up his sprint. He started to slow up at the top of the key. The defenders from Drake turned their head. That's when Murphy made his dive and Lynch found him. Timber, good pass inside, but a walk on Schlaughter. Turnover number six. And that was as good as a block shot because he saw Lynch and Murphy rotating over took his eye off the rim and focused on the defenders leading to the travel. 6-0 run all from Murphy who's up to 16 points off the fingertips of Lynch and the ninth turnover that's a pass that Coffey would love to have back. A little hop there for Lynch to hang on to and Minnesota gives it back and Lynch will now come out Michael Hurt on the floor for Minnesota. Haven't seen Bakari Kanate yet. Cleared to play tonight. Did not play against Arkansas due to a concussion that he sustained in the Nebraska game. Good job by McRae again of being there on the catch with Timmer. Oh, good ball fake. Man, that was nice. Throws the defender just enough to get that clean look. Just not able to convert. You got to get it to Murphy again. I mean, he's got to demand the ball down there. Right on cue, Coffey finds him, and he does that. The barn pretty quiet, pretty stunned at times tonight, but now they're into it. Gibbs fouled by Coffey. 
So the freshman from Waldorf, Maryland, Jalen Gibbs, will shoot two. Coffee commits the foul. Nice job by Coffee of understanding that Murphy had inside position. He was able to take his defender up the lane. No shot blocking threat. Leads him right to the rim and a good recognition by Minnesota. They've gotten away from that for periods of time and that's allowed Drake to hang around. It's the third free throw attempt all year for Jalen Gibbs. He's knocked down two out of the three. Gibbs coming off a 16 point game in 23 minutes on Saturday in a win over Omaha. The Bulldogs out of the Missouri Valley Conference, a 10 team league and predicted to finish last. Missouri State, the overwhelming favorite to win the MVC this season. Corey, this is a Drake program that won seven games all of last year. Five victories so far. One of them coming against an ACC team in Wake Forest where the Bulldogs hit 15 threes. Mason for the tie. Minnesota has net led yet tonight. And that was made possible because of the previous possession where Murphy had single coverage, was able to turn and complete. Drake tries to counter with the double team. Smart play by Murphy to kick it out to Mason. Earth falls down, Washington driving. Here's Coffee, and he throws it away. 10 turnover. Vendonde driving on Hurt, and he got it to go, attacking Michael Hurt, the sophomore from Rochester. Nice job of spreading the floor again and able to get to the rim. You have the shot blocker Lynch on the bench, and in this situation, Drake able to take advantage. Coffee, though, answers on the offensive end. Just four points for Mir Coffee, averaging 14 per game. Tied at 45. Woodward. Now McMurray fouled by Washington. On a hand check, his second will stop play with 11 13 to play. The double down. Murphy kicks it out. Mason able to get it going, but it all started with the post play and smart play of Jordan Murphy. double-double in as many games for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. He's a big reason that Minnesota has been able to climb back into this by shooting 71% from the floor in the second half after being stagnant for long periods of time on the defensive end of the floor. The backcourt of Minnesota has done a very, very good job of containing the leading score for Drake, holding into six points so far. McMurray over Lynch and company. Deontay McMurray with two more. And he has 12. And nobody came to get the ball. And finally, Michael Hurt does that. Washington, two points so far tonight. Mason, that doesn't go. And Woodward, the rebound. He didn't catch it cleanly, and he was fighting his feet. That shot was doomed for failure. Mason now 4 of 10 from the field. He has 12 points. Good job by Washington there. Really good job defensively. Edward the miss and lifts the rebound. Seventh rebound to go with seven points. If Lynch, if Lynch goes hard. <laughs> Did you see Gibbs run into Lynch? Oh. Free throws up coming for Amir Coffey, but a massive collision in the lane. But Lynn the foul, his third, and Coffey the line shooting two. Now this is a clean play. Sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug. <laughs> and Gibbs was an insect. And 
Gibbs yeah. will come out of the game. I understand why. <laughs> so, let's go back to this again. This is a clean play. And that's why guards occasionally get mad at my fellow big guys. You've got to let them know it's coming. That's not fair. Here, Coffey now with six. Tied at 47. Jordan Murphy, a quick breather, and now back in as Coffey comes out. Drake in this game, despite a quiet night so far from Reed Zimmer, only six points. CJ Rivers. And here's Timmer under 10 to shoot. Head by McBrayer. Good screen. Oh, they missed him. They missed. Drake had an opportunity for the roll. Off the miss. Another chance for the Bulldogs. Timmer, jump ball to call, tied up by Murphy. It'll stay with Drake with 9.19 to play. And McBrayer's done a very good job as a fellow left-hander. Notice how McBrayer's been shading the left hand of the leading scorer for Drake, Reed Timmer. I think he has an advantage of understanding, you know, he's a fellow southpaw, and he hasn't been able to let him get to his strong hand very often. McMurray, high arcing three off the rim. And McGreer the rebound. The Gophers haven't led tonight. Will that change here? McGreer for the lead. McGreer was all of his first seven. Scoreless until that three. And with that, the Gophers have their first lead. Flashing inside, and Rivers could not finish. McBrayer to Mason for three. McMurray drops it underneath. Aragondade. How about McMurray? His ability to not only get in the lane and complete for himself, but utilize that jump stop and the excellent leave at the rim by McMurray. And Thomas will check in next whistle for the Bulldogs. Mason. Off the glass. That one doesn't go. Hurt. Lost it. Hurt still fighting for it. Hits the back of Mason near the baseline. And it'll go back to Drake. And Mason just unaware of where the ball was. Last touch by the senior. Nice skip pass over the top, and McBrayer follows up a nice defensive sequence on Timmer with a three-point shot of his own as Drake backed off, trying to take away the interior feed to Murphy. Go for shooting 61% from the field this half, and they just get it in, and they keep it alive for now. Timmer on the ground, and a foul as Kissling went up with it, and he will shoot two, so Drake fortunate to keep possession and a couple of free throws when we come back. It's a one-point game under eight to play on BTN. Basketball on BTN is brought to you in part by State Farm. Here to help life go right. Back with Sean Morris, Corey Provis from Minneapolis. A one-point game, 7.56. We go back to this last possession before the break. And Richard Bertino, I and his team as we went to commercial break, Sean. Because well, what you see is you see a couple of guys in white jerseys jogging. The ball's loose on the floor. Timmer goes down and digs it out. And after that initial trap, you can't jog back to protect the rim. And Drake showed you why. Corey Kitzling. Redshirt Jr. from Dunkerton, Iowa. His eighth game. Missing the first, this one. To tie things up, and he can't do it. Empty trip. <laughs> Murphy 
Murphy will drive. Floats and scores. Murphy with 20. And a nice, 14 rebounds. And a nice job, Corey. They had the two bigs on the same side, and a nice job by Lynch of kind of fanning out just enough to allow a little extra driving angle and space for Murphy. Gophers have their largest lead of three tonight. Thomas, can he tie it? No. Rebound number 15 for number three. And Thomas with the foul on Mason. And what you see, watch Lynch just take that extra step that takes his defender out, which allows a cleaner driving angle for Murphy. He slides away. The rotation is a little late, and Murphy able to complete in the lane. And as a result of the last few possessions, most recently, Drake went to a little bit of his own defense to give Minnesota a different look on this end of the floor. Now, we've been spoiled. We, we've seen Jordan Murphy from day one throughout his collegiate career, and his freshman year, he could dunk, he could rebound. But the maturation, the evolution of his game, it's so visible right now as you watch this guy dominate team after team, no matter the conference, no matter the opponent, the venue. Time and time again, Murphy putting up numbers. Murray picks up the foul, his third, and Coffey will shoot two. I mean, Jordan Murphy just finished up that thought. He wasn't making that play his no. freshman year. And you have to give him a lot of credit, not just for the time he's put in to make his game better, but according to the world in which we live now, when he was a freshman, that team won eight games. A lot of guys would have said, you know what, I'm out. He stuck around. They had a tremendous year a season ago, and he is playing himself not just into potential all Big Ten laurels as a junior, but he will get serious and deserved attention for potential All-American mention. Important trip here for Drake. Down by five. They need some points. Woodward, can he do it? Yes. The Edina native. Graham Woodward, his second three tonight, and it's a two-point game. Man, Drake runs some good stuff. There they utilize the misdirection dribble. You get the defense floating one way, then you kick it back to a three-point shooter who can step into it. Coffee, the smooth answer. His first three tonight. Timeout, Minnesota. Nice sequence by both squads here. The little misdirection, you kick it back. The woman who's able to step in and knock down the three, and then Minnesota returns the favor, hands down, and Coffey able to shoot over the top of the smaller Drake defender. Gophers tonight beginning a stretch of six straight at home. We'll have some time off, though, between games. Finals coming up this week for students and the student athletes. Ten days in all. Yeah. Twin games for the Gophers. Oral Roberts here next Thursday. You can see that game on BTN Plus. Meanwhile, Drake, a Big Ten team tonight. We'll see another Big Ten team. You'll be there in Des Moines on Saturday. And I tell you what, that you know, you know that the Iowa Hawkeyes are watching this ball game, and they have to be really impressed with how difficult Drake has made it on the defensive end of the floor for Minnesota because of their precision cuts, spacing of the floor and the utilization of dribble penetration when the opportunity is there. Really good job by Mason of being there on the catch defensively. Mason just giving Timmer no space. Lynch knocking it away from Schlaughter. It'll stay with the Bulldogs in four to shoot. Now this is a situation with the shot clock being what it is with under five, you can't fall asleep on the trigger man here. McMurray, especially with the way he's been actively attacking the glass. They made sure try to give it in and maybe give it back to him, but they, they run out of time. Timmer with two, Timmer with one, doesn't get it off. And a shot clock violation on the Bulldogs. Timmer had the ball in his hands, could not get a shot off. Mason was right in his face defensively. And the Gophers have the ball back, leading by five. And Mason and McBrayer 
have done a really good job of taking out the leading scorer, Reed Timmer, from the arsenal of Drake so far tonight. Give it back to him. Yep. I sure do. And Murphy. Make you walk. Travel. Call Mr. Morris. Turnover number 12 on Minnesota. Yeah, Murphy got just a little bit in a hurry and got off balance. It was kind of an awkward play. It was a nice set. They bring him up high. And watch him. He gets, he's kind of off balance there. Yeah, no one, no one tripped him. He just lost his balance and will go the other way. The 12 turnovers Minnesota has tonight. Murphy charged with five. And I really the foul, Sean. That's going to be his second. And I really like what Mason did defensively. He closes out. He's done a nice job on Timmer. He closes out, takes away the perimeter shot, and then he does exactly what we wanted them to do if you're Minnesota, funneling toward. Now watch. He closes out under control. You're funneling him toward the shot blocker, Lynch. And that's a tough one to have go against you if you're Lynch. Timmer pretty much automatic at the free throw line as we mentioned around 92 percent before tonight now that averages 22 per game his lowest scoring game this season is 12 that was at Omaha in late November and the thing that he's also done he's been held in check I think the thing that's impressed me as much as anything is the fact Timmer hasn't forced anything he hasn't figured well you know I averaged 22 a game I've got to get mine I can't think of a bad shot or a poor decision he's made on that end of the floor yet. Off he finds McBrayer. Mason up top. And the rebound to Deontay McMurray, and the Bulldogs can tie it with a three here. Nearly lost it, kept his dribble going into the corner. Woodward got him up for the tie. Short, and be the rebound, number 16. Uh, Drake had a good look. Yep. That shot was thrown off because that skip past Corey was down around the knees. He had to work to get it into the shooting pocket. Contact and a block is called on McMurray. That's his fourth. That's an important. Yeah, and he's played well. Murray, 12 points here tonight, is right at his season average. Fifteen foul on the Bulldogs to Coffee. Throws it in, and now it's McBrayer with four minutes to play. McBrayer baseline, and he is bumped. Still not in the bonus. So Minnesota with the ball up by three. We have a tight one late on BTN. Final 3.54 from the Bards. Second half, 57-54 Gophers. Free throws upcoming for Minnesota as play resumes. I should say, excuse me, Minnesota ball. This play resumes no free throws. But Jordan Murphy, we have seen this time and time again. The word elite popular in these parts. And Murphy has been that man again here tonight. As many double-doubles as there have been contests thus far for Minnesota. And that equals the number of double-doubles Murphy had the entire season a year ago. Amir Coffey, a solid second half. He's up to 13 for the game. The lead is back to five. And now McBrayer the steal. He read that pass. McBrayer the hammer. The pilfer. Then the punch. And the Gopher bench is loving it. And this place is alive. It's an angry crowd at times tonight. And Drake not going away. Ori Aragondonde with another three. His third made three tonight. And the lead trimmed to four. Now you have an opportunity to maybe play inside out. The outside shooting has picked up a little bit, but you don't want to get away 
from attacking the basket and utilizing your size advantage if you're Minnesota. Coffee. Nice job by McBrayer of hopping that passing angle. Really the first poor decision made by Timmer. Kind of a lazy pass, and McBrayer reads it and then sends it in. McBrayer and Mason have done a nice job defensively. And some people like their coffee one way. Minnesota likes their coffee strong. Nice job <laughs> by the sophomore. And their coffee had a tough first half. Turnovers. You could see frustration at times out of the sophomore from nearby Hopkins. It's such a, an important piece to this Minnesota team that lacks depth. And Coffey's had a great second half, 16 for the game, all 16 here since the intermission. And a whistle away from the ball. And a foul called on Minnesota. They're going to get to Free McGrayer. Yeah, he was, he grabbed the jersey of the cutter. I think it was Woodward who was trying to make his way through there, and the officials caught him. Now, that's that's big for a number of reasons. It's a foul on McGrayer's done a nice job defensively, but from Drake's standpoint now, you have the opportunity. That foul puts you in the bonus. You have a chance to get this lead with just under three minutes to go. And Drake has some terrific free-throw shooters, and one of them at the line right now. This is a one-and-one one for Graham Woodward. Began his career at Penn State. He's played one year and then sat out before continuing his career in Des Moines with Drake. And as I mentioned, a, a teammate and very good friends with Minnesota's Reggie Lynch. They grew up together, shared the same birthday. Both 23 years old. Born in the same hospital, Methodist Hospital in St. Louis Park. Played together as prep players, collegiate players, and now doing it yet again in their hometown. Coffee in the paint. Rolled out. Knocked out. It'll stay with Minnesota. I really like the set by Minnesota there, Corey. Coffee has shown a willingness to attack the basket here in the second half, and he's able to get it going to a strong hand with a lot of momentum going to the basket. Just not able to convert, but a really good recognition of continuing to feed the hot hand there by Minnesota. Brayer in traffic, too strong. The tip into the corner, run down by McMurray on the floor right now with four fouls. Crossing over McBrayer. Woodward for three. And the Bulldogs not going away. The Drake bench comes to life. Graham Woodward, a spark here. And it's a two-point game with 208 to play. A full timeout call. This is a team in Drake that came in shooting 43% from behind the arc on the season. They've been able to get everyone going, ironically, except their leading scorer, Timmer, who's been held in check. But Woodward, the fifth-year senior, kind of answering it as of late. That was a difficult shot off the dribble by Woodward because he wasn't able to step into it with that lead foot going into his right hand. He was led to his left. That's a difficult conversion from behind the arc. Tell me today, he loved coming to games here as a kid, watching go for basketball. And he was telling you know, his teammates, you know, many of them that never played here, played on an elevated floor. Now, Drake did practice here last night, busting up his under four hour drive from Des Moines yesterday. And that there is an adjustment that he have to, to have to make playing here on this elevated floor. And the Bulldogs, who led by four at halftime, have trailed there in the second half for a while, but still in this game, down by two with 2.08 to play. Coming up this week on BTN, non-conference hoops action continues as Illinois takes on Longwood and Northwestern hosts Valpo. It's all on Wednesday and Thursday night right here on BTN and streaming live at BTN to go on Fox Sports Go. Minnesota goes back inside here, right? I think they have, yeah, absolutely, they have to.
Bush, the double team. McGrayer from the corner. And a look. Murphy inside. Got the ball back. And one. There were blue shirts underneath. There was only one white shirt, but that one white shirt. The best rebounder in the conference. Corey, we talked about the fact that for long periods of time, Drake was quicker to the basketball than Minnesota, but when it matters most, Jordan Murphy returns the favor. 22 points, 17 rebounds. You see the numbers for Murphy. And now Lynch with the block. <laughs> McMurray had no chance. Oh, that shot was dismissed with extreme prejudice. I mean, Lynch is just timing this up. And so many guys can only block with their dominant hand. Lynch shows you why it's so important. Because if he tries to come across, he's going to have to come across his body to block that if he tries to block it with his right hand, able to utilize the left. Some timeouts. Drake only one left. Both teams in the bonus. Well, number 22. Nice job by Lynch. The only thing he could have done better, Corey, I think he could have kept this in bounds. If he doesn't swing down on it and points it, I think they have a chance to do the Golden Gophers to go the other way with it. Tamer and air ball. Uh, one of seven from the field. Mason with 10. Back to Murphy. Murphy. Two more. For Minnesota, took time off the shot clock. And the lead is up to six. And that shot, in addition to the athleticism of Murphy, was a cumulative effect of the fact that Drake just doesn't have enough big bodies that they've been able to utilize throughout the course of the game. And now it's Murphy with the denial. little bit of a roll to the rim and not a lot of big bodies that Drake's been able to utilize and Murphy just able to elevate over the top. Bulldogs need this. Doesn't go. Mason the rebound. Nico Medved saying to foul. And yep. on the sideline yep. goes McBrayer. So the Bulldogs were trying to foul. Instead, they forced a turnover, and Drake is going to call its last timeout with 28 seconds to play. So Reed Timmer did not foul. He was in position to foul. Instead, just defended well and yeah. forced McBrayer out of bounds. And that happened right in front of us. There was no question. It wasn't that McBrayer was tiptoeing that line. I mean, he was well. Out of the out of the floor. Watch where his foot lands. Coming up right there. I mean, it, it's not even close. And I think what also made that an easier call for the official, if Timmer doesn't show his hands, even though there was a little bit of contact down low, if Timmer has his hands down below his shoulders, that might have been a little bit more of a call that could have gone the other way, even though he clearly stepped out of bounds, but a nice play by Timmer to show the hands of the official. All right, shot clock is off, 28 seconds to play. Does Drake need a three here? I continue to attack the rim. I mean, you don't have to take a three because you've got fouls to give, and it won't be a double bonus if needed. McMurray, Coffey collapsed defensively, under 20. Drake has to go. Woodward open lane. Lynch is there. Now the kick out. Aragon Dundee was out of bounds. No, he walked. So an empty trip. 12 and a half to play. And Minnesota has the ball back. And the Bulldogs must foul. And Minnesota did a very good job in that last defensive 
sequence of keeping Drake in front and not allowing them to turn the corner until the very end. They forced the ball handler Woodward toward the baseline, and then they ran out of real estate on the far side. Lynch comes out, not a great free throw shooter, so Hurt comes in, and there's the foul on Michael Hurt. Still a one and one. And that's why if they were able to get a two earlier, I kind of like where Drake was because you could then give the common foul as they did in this situation, and it's still a one and one. Now the next foul will put Minnesota into the double bonus, but a, a made two on that last possession for Drake would have made this very, very interesting. Now Michael Hurd, not too many attempts, just 15. Beg your pardon, six. I'll get it right. Eight. He's four of eight at the free throw line this season. This is a one and one. And a miss. Ten seconds. Timmer has to go. Bounce inside. Aragon Dunde. Drake no timeouts. 5.9. And it's loose. They get it back. Murphy the block. With one second. One word. They heave. It goes. That's wow. going to be a three. But the Bulldogs oh, will wow. still lose by one. So the clock says zero. It is a final. Graham Woodward, the heave of the buzzer, it goes. But still, the Gophers escape with a one-point win. Well, you wonder, too, if there was some contact and it wasn't called and how things would perhaps have played out. But it's over, and Minnesota wins. Tested big time tonight. Gopher team that was put off the floor at halftime. But Jordan Murphy... Phenomenal yet again. 24 points, 18 rebounds, and the Gophers now 9-3. Escape with a one-point win, 68-66. to 66.